Welcome back, Dram Fam, to another episode on the Whiskey Diary. So, I'm wearing a different hat, and you want to know more about King's Barnes Whiskey? Let me explain. So, first things first, I'm wearing a different hat because when it gets to that time of the year that the heating goes on for the first time, I basically switch to a woolly hat. This will now stay until the heating goes off again. I mean, we live in Scotland, so that could be January or July, but you'll know because I'll go back to the cap. Anyway, this week, I'm gonna be talking about King's Barnes whiskey. Now, a few weeks ago, I was lucky enough to get to go to the distillery and shoot some video there, which was fantastic. It's a beautiful distillery. Um, so I thought I'd give you a bit of history on the distillery. We'll go through some of the whiskies I've got here, and then I'll show you the footage I got whilst I was there. So, the history. King's Barnes is a distillery that's in Fife, which is just on the east coast of Scotland, just north of Edinburgh. It was started originally by a caddy who worked at, there's a massive golf course next door. Uh, as you're driving up to the distillery from Fife, you drive over these beautiful grounds of this, um, of, of uh, the golf course and you can see all the greens, I think that's the word for them, all the, uh, all the golf course on the left-hand side, just as you're approaching. And it was originally started by a caddy there called Dougie, who, it was a professional caddy who was sick of telling his clients that were coming to Scotland if they wanted to go to a distillery, they had to go miles away. So he thought, let's put a distillery here in Fife. He got funding together from the government to start the business plan and eventually approached the Weems family. Fun story, I thought it was pronounced Wemis for many years, but uh, do that information what you will. They have a lot of property in Fife. They have a lot of business in Fife. So they were the ideal candidates to go to, given that they were an independent bottler for Weems Malts. They, they independently bottle a number of spirits, including gin. And they have property businesses in the area. So it made a lot of sense for them to be the investors and the owners of the distillery. Now, the distillery was officially established in 2014. They didn't fill their first casks until March 2015. If you visit the distillery, which I highly recommend that you do, you can actually see the first ever cask that was filled, cask number one, in one of the dovecots or ducats. Fun story, on the bottles, you'll see birds printed around the top and this kind of hatched pattern at the bottom. And that's a nod on every bottle back to the ducat or dovecot where the first cask actually sits, which is a really, really nice touch because I've always been a big fan of these bottles and I've never really understood what exactly this means. So that's a fantastic story that you'll learn all about if you go and visit. Now, whilst the distillery itself is quite small, it's beautifully presented. As you come off the main road, you drive across some fields and then this small stone building presents itself. Beautiful grass and fields all around. And as you walk into the distillery for the first time, it's very apparent that it's a new distillery inside of an old building, or at least a building where they've kept very much in line with the traditional architecture of the time. As far as the actual distillery part goes, the still room is absolutely stunning with two enormous copper stills manufactured by Forsyths. They have one wash still and one spirit still. Another thing I really like about the distillery is that all the barley that goes into the whiskey is grown locally. Um, in fact, the tour guide that showed us round, it was her son was actually harvesting the barley in one of the promotional videos that they show you as you're walking around the tour. And she's a, so she's a local and it's kind of a testament to the ethos of the distillery that everything's kept local. The barley is grown in the fields around the distillery. 
It's then sent off to be malted and then is brought back to the distillery where it's milled on site. So as we move through the process of making the whiskey, the master distiller there, interestingly, is actually from a brewing background which means he's brought his own unique twist on the distilling process in that he actually uses two different strains of yeast to ferment the wash. Now, while I'm sure there are lots of other distilleries that do interesting things with their yeasts, this is the first one where it's actually, it's something that's explained to you as part of the tour and is maybe responsible for some of the more unique flavors that you'll find in their new make spirit. Now they source the majority of their casks, I believe it's about 85% of their casks, from Heaven Hill Distillery in Kentucky. They try and keep the majority of their casks to first fill bourbon. Given that they're quite a new distillery and the oldest spirit they could possibly have is six or seven years old, they use the first fill bourbon casks because they're going to give that spirit the best opportunity to mature and really take on flavor of those casks versus something that's been used two or three times before when the cask is really not going to have that much influence on that spirit. The rest of the casks are Oloroso first fill casks which are sourced from Spain but they also use some STR red wine barriques which stands for shaved toasted and recharged, which is a fantastic way to utilize more of that cask influence from any particular cask. So what I'd really like to do is just take you through all of their offerings. So it's not gonna be an in-depth tasting so much as just an overview of the different whiskies that you can get from Kings Barnes at the moment. Of course, if there are any of these that you really want to see me do an in-depth review of, leave a comment down below, I'll see what I can do. So, let's talk about the whiskey. Well, more specifically, let's talk about the New Make Spirit. So they sell their New Make Spirit, and full disclosure, this is one of my all-time favorite New Make Spirits. I'm not, I've not been paid, I've bought all of these bottles myself with my own money. And this is one of the first New Make Spirits I tried, where I was really quite blown away by how nice it was. Bottled at 63.5%. Very fruity, like incredibly fruity. I made the joke at the distillery that I'm pretty confident they just distill Frutella, because to me, this just reeks of raspberry Frutella. Very beautifully sweet and juicy and upfront. an incredibly light spirit. Very much in line with that lowland style. Lowland whiskies tend to have quite a light flavor, well, certainly a light texture to them. Doesn't mean light in flavor, but does mean light in texture, which this definitely has, but the fruit flavor is overwhelming with a nice dry spiciness on the tail end. I'd say, it's probably one of my all time favorite new make spirits just to drink. Absolutely fantastic. Also get subscribed because I'm going to be going through a number of different new make spirits, talking about the differences between them, really talking you through what makes a new make spirit. But anyway, this is their dream to dram. This is sort of their first core range whiskey. It is made up of 90% first fill bourbon casks and 10% of those 100% STR red wine barriques I was talking about earlier. First thing on the nose, orchard fruits, hints of, sort of red berries and a really nice kind of floral tea-like quality at the tail end, palette wise. Very sweet, very delicate, very light. Almost got a creaminess to it, I guess. It's very, as you revisit, you get some slightly more pastry notes, which I guess kind of line up with the creaminess on the palette. It's got a medium short finish, 
subtle biscuity notes. Very gentle, very pleasant, very easy drinking dram. Next, we're going to move on to the Bell Rock. So this was finished in X Oloroso Sherry Butts and First Fill Bourbon Casks. As with all of their whiskies, these are all natural color, all non-chill filtered. So what you see is the color that's been taken on. I think a lot of that is to do with those first fill casks that they're using. So you get a lot more cask influence in such a short space of time. I've got to say, um, the Dream to Dram is bottled at 46%, as is the Bell Rock. So this has still got that orchard fruits sort of, um, initial nose on it. Very, very similar to the Dream, Dream to Dram. But it's got a bit of a darker spiciness that sits behind it. To me, this is just a slightly darker, slightly richer variant on the Dream to Dram. I'm guessing that would be the influence of those Oloroso sherry butts, just adding that, that slightly richer spiciness. On the palate. It's definitely richer and bolder than the Dream to Dram. Maybe hints of baking spices coming through on the tail end. Finish wise, very much the same, but it kind of rounds out to be a little bit more, I think, chocolatey. It's definitely not as light and uh, sprightly as the Dream to Dram. Got some more toastier notes and baking spices and a darker, chocolatier, chocolatier, a darker, more chocolate finish. So this is the Balcomi. Once again, 46%, all natural color, unchill filtered. Once again, fantastic color from those first fill butts. This time we're 100% Ex Oloroso American Oak Sherry Butts. Again, that what I'm starting to notice is quite a quintessentially King's Barnes jammy orchard fruits, but this has got a much sweeter arrival on the nose. More of a, where we've got dark spices from the Bell Rock, this is more of a fruitier spice. I guess akin to cranberry sauce, I guess. Into the palate. A little bit lighter than we had over at the Bell Rock, but it's got a really nice big sort of sweet jamminess to it. On the finish there, Slightly lighter than we had on the Bell Rock. A little bit longer. A little bit sweeter. Those orchard fruits kind of come back and give you some nice sweet, maybe a dare say even berries, just right on the tail end. This is probably my favorite thus far, but now we get on to something a little bit special. This was actually the first whiskey I ever tasted from King's Barnes. So much so that it warrants the uh, 1920s blender's glass. <coughs> this is the King's Barnes 100% STR. In fact, I've got about 100 bottles of whiskey back there and this is the only one that's doubled up. Uh, I couldn't actually get a second bottle online. I had to go to the distillery. And a massive thank you to Michael that managed to dig one out of a cupboard for me so I could buy it because this is probably my favorite whiskey on the shelf. I've definitely talked about it before in other videos and if you could ever get a chance, in fact, if you ever get a chance to get a bottle of this, I highly recommend. It's about, these whiskies go for about 40, 50 pounds a bottle. This is 80 and this is probably the best 80 pounds that I've ever spent. So. If we look at the color, I would never normally bring up color when talking about whiskey. Obviously, you can you can color a whiskey with caramel. E was it E one hundred and fifty A? That is one hundred percent natural color from a maximum of six seven years in a barrel, which is ridiculous. And again, it's a testament to those one hundred percent STR casks. How much cask influence you can get into a whiskey. <sighs> it 
So, right away, so this one, this one here is bottled at full cask strength. So the new make goes in about 63.5. This has come out at 59.8. On the nose, big, spicy, jam on toast. Really big and sweet. Tons of jam notes, a nice toasty biscuitiness underneath. And right as we, uh, as we become accustomed to that, we get a really nice spicy dark chocolate. Palette wise. It's such a light spirit, but it's so big and juicy when it comes to flavor. The spirit itself feels super light, but the flavor is really mouth coating and, and almost sickly sweet but it's so well balanced with a nice dry spiciness on the tail end of that. Finish wise, it's got a really, really long finish. Starts super sweet and then rounds itself out into a more her herbaceous spicy, which sticks with you for ages. Like the, the finish on this will last so long. It is unsurprising that this is one of my all time favorite whiskies. And you can really see those big jammy notes coming through from the new make and how well those 100% STR casks influence this, this fantastic big fruity Frutella new make. This is an absolutely stunning whiskey. I, I cannot recommend this enough. One thing I do really like about this as well is every time you revisit it, the spiciness and the sweetness play off ever so slightly differently. Sometimes I get more of a spiciness come forward, more of those toast notes come through, but other times I get so much more of the jam notes hitting me first. But anyway, enough about this. I'll uh, leave you with some of the B-roll that I shot at the distillery. So uh, pour yourself a dram sit back and enjoy my view of King's Barnes. very much for watching. If you like this episode, please click the like button and comment any other distilleries you'd like me to visit and give you a kind of brief overview of what they've got to offer. If you'd like to support the channel, please do hit the subscribe button and you can click the bell icon to be notified whenever I upload. And on that note, 
Slangevar.